In this lesson, we will be evaluating logarithms. Just to recap, this is your logarithmic form and this is your exponential form. And we've talked about the connection between logarithmic and exponential, one being the inverse of the other. So we're going to express in exponential form and then solve. So we're doing a recap right now. This isn't new. This is just reviewing some material that we already know. Log base 2 of 64 equals x. So we can, the question says to express an exponential form. So we have to start with that. So the exponential form, the base is a 2, the exponent is the x, and then we're left with the 64 as what was the input. When we have this situation, we need our bases to match. So I always go, you have to go with the lower number between 2 and 64, 2 is lower. So 2 to the x is fine, but I need to make the 64 2 uh, as a base of 2. So 2 to the power of what is 64? And you should memorize a bunch of these base 2 numbers because they're very common to need to use. 2 to the power of 6 is 64. Since our bases match, we can kind of ignore them. We're not dividing by 2 or square rooting or anything like that. When we Because they match, it means that x must equal 6. So we can come to the conclusion that x is equal to 6. Next one, we start, we're converting to exponential form. The base is a one half to the power of w equals eight. Now the reason I put brackets there, if I didn't have brackets around the one half, that would technically be saying the w is only attached to the one. That's like saying one to the power of w over two. And that's not right. The power of w has to be applied to the entire base. So that's why I put the uh, brackets around it. So one half to the power of w. Fractions are always a little difficult to work with, so let's first just get rid of the fraction. One half is the same as two to the power of negative one. To the power of w equals eight. Okay, let me clean that got a little bit messy there, that negative one. Negative one. So now that I am back in the situation I was at over here where I want the same base, and I'm going to use a smaller number, which is a base of 2. This is the power of a power law, so this is 2 to the power of negative w equals 2 to the power of what? 8 is the same as 2 to the power of 3. My base is matched, so I can ignore them now and look at the exponents. That gives me negative w equals 3, or w equals negative 3. There's different ways to come about the answer. You could have made a common base of a one half if you wanted to instead of a base of two. It's a little harder with fractions, but it's fine to do it that way. Next one, and this is review. Our base is a five. Our exponent, let's switch colors, sorry. To keep everything a little different here. Our base is a five, our exponent is p, and that's equal to the square root of 5. So I'm going to clean up that square root of 5 and write it instead like that with a base of 5. The square root is the same as the exponent of 1 half. So that's all the work that needs to be done in this question. Our bases match, so when we just ignore them and look at the exponents, we just have p equals 1 half. So that was all we had to do for that question. Next one, base is 3. 3 to the power of v equals the seventh root of 9. Again, the first thing, the same thing I did over here, I want to get rid of that radical. So 3 to the power of v equals, I just want it to be a 9, and 7, seventh root is the same as 1 seventh. So now I have just integer bases, which are a little easier to deal with than fractions or radicals. My next step is to write them with the common base. So a common base, you go to the smaller number, that's the 3. So I'm going to leave this one on the left alone. It's 3 to the power of v equals. Now instead of a 9 to the power of 1 seventh, I want to change the 9 to a base of 3. And that, of course, is 3 squared. So we have 3 to the power of v equals. That's a power of a power law, which means we multiply and we get 2 sevenths. So v is equal to two-sevenths. One more. If you think you have the hang of this, then why don't you try it yourself? Press pause and do it. Um, let me. It's a little bit different, so I'm going to for sure walk you through it. 
we get x to the power of 4 equals 81. So this time, uh, how am I going to get a common base here? What I'm looking for is x to the power of 4. In this case, I don't know what my base is, but I know I want it to be, um, one way to look at it is it needs to be something to the power of 4. The way we actually calculate that, let me go down here, x to the power of 4 equals 81. I'm going to isolate x by taking the fourth root of both sides, fourth root of both sides, I'll write that again, fourth root of 81, and the fourth root of 81 is 3. So up here I could have just put a 3 in the bracket, knowing that 3 to the power of 4 is the same as 81, that would have told me x is 3, so I could have done that one either way. That's just a recap of evaluating logs by changing everything to exponential first. We've got some generalizations we want to figure out about log properties. So it's easier for you to calculate some questions without having to always try to figure everything out individually. For example, we, we can't get a solution for this one. Why not? Let's look at what log base to the graph would be. Let's try to make a straight line here log base 2, I'm just going to draw a, a general sketch like this. I'm not even going to put any numbers on my graph. If that's log base 2, log base 2 of negative 4, so um, log base 2 of negative 4 equals x, so writing that out as 2 to the power of x equals negative 4, there's no answer for that. I know you might be tempted to say, what's well, negative 2 to the power of negative 2 is negative 4. No, it's not. 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared. It's actually 1 over 4. And the re when we look at that graphically, this graph doesn't exist anywhere. We have an asymptote, and then the, the log graph isn't going to cross over that asymptote. So we are not going to have a we're not going to be able to find this negative four value here. It can't be negative. So our graph, our log graph here, has the domain of x is greater than zero. So that those are the only numbers we can use. The same idea with this piece right here, log base two of zero. Log base two of zero is um, let's write that as log base two of 0 equals, pick some letter, any letter, m, 2 to the power of m equals 0. There's nothing. 2 to the power of 0 is 1, in case you were thinking the exponent would be 0. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. We can't, again, there is no value because of the asymptote. So there are some numbers for inputs here that are not going to give us a solution. So when you get a question like that and you're spending a long time trying to figure it out, think about it. Our x value this is our domain right here. So we can't have any numbers that fall outside of that domain. The next bullet is log base A of 1. So this is kind of a generalization we're going to make here. Log base A of 1, what is that equal to? Maybe you already have an idea, but always we can convert to exponential form. Let me just write it here. Log base A of 1 is equal to, and let's put just put a question mark. What's it equal to? That's a to the power of something equals 1. That question mark can only always be one answer, and that's a 0. So this will be a 0, no matter what a is. doesn't matter if a is 12. If this were a 12 here, whatever your base is, any, regardless of what your base is, if you have a 1 for your input, the answer's got to be a 0. The next general property is log base a of a to the power of x. That one's kind of crazy looking. Let me rewrite that over here. Log base a of a to the power of x. What is that equal to? Let's rearrange that. So here's my base a to the question mark is equal to my input, which is a to the power of x. So you can see clearly from here, it's equal to x. When you have your base and your input number here are the same, 
it's going to work out to be the exponent it is going to be the answer and you can memorize that little property there I don't because there's so many little properties that I don't want to try to memorize them all I just work them out like I did right here each time I just figure them out it takes like 10 seconds and then I know what it is um, but memorizing is is certainly something you can do too if that's the way you like to learn math the next one should have had a blank line here this is equal to blank line okay this one is weird because it's actually not in x that's not in logarithmic form this one's an exponential form because the the word log is there but it's in the exponent so let's write that out um a of log base a x this is a strange one what's that let pick another letter that's equal to y now this is exponential form so I'm actually going to convert to log form this symbol here with this kind of equal sign with arrows on either end means equivalent to so I want to convert that to logarithmic form so converting it to logarithmic form you remember how to go from exponential to log it seems easier now to go from exponential to log than is log the other way around so this would be log my base is the a that was my base a and my input or my out in this case it's we're going in the opposite direction that's the y that would be equal to the exponent remember the whole point of the log is to pull down this exponent so i'm going to write log base a of x here now when you look at this form logarithmic form here this is log form it's pretty clear to see those equation those expressions are almost exactly identical to each other except one is a y and one is an x therefore therefore x equals y right those two are equal to each other so from that we can go way back here we're going to take this x equals y conclusion and go back in here to our original question and instead of this being a y I'm just going to put an X there. I'm going to use this because I want the letter to be the same. So when you have this number and this number the same, the answer is just going to be whatever number is there. And that's just a general property that you can memorize or you can solve the way I did here each time. And the last type of kind of weird one we get sometimes is we, when we don't have a base. We talked about this in our last lesson. When we don't have a base, that means the base is an invisible 10. So this is log base 10 of 100 is equal to pick a letter, any letter. How about a, what haven't we used lately? How about a D? Okay, so then that gives us, that's equivalent to saying 10 to the power of d equals 100. So I think you can all figure out that that will be a 2. So now that we've gone through some kind of specific and different types of, of scenarios, let's try out these questions down here. Now what you can do, for example, 1a, is you can look for a matching type of question here and then just follow the little formula. However, that that really is just following steps right that's not really understanding what's going on maybe you've already memorized you, if the step and you know what the answer is you can see that it's matching this one here so you maybe can already see okay well, the answer is going to be six i know it's going to be a six but uh, we don't want to get confused on a quiz or a test so let's just work it out let's make it equal to some letter a and we're going to rearrange it our base is a 3 to the power of a equals 3 to the power of x ah yes now it's much easier to see that this a is going to equal 6 which means this whole piece here equals 6. okay um you can work it out or you can memorize it i think it's always better to understand the, the steps that you're using the next one also matches one of the patterns of one above but let's make sure you know how to do it let's make it equal to some letter how about y now this is exponential so i'm going to convert this to log form so log base what's the base the base is the two and then i um, 
picked a Y here for my for my answer on the side, whatever letter you pick, and that's going to equal the exponent. That's log base two of one. Ah, uh, yes. Now it's very clear to see that the answer is going to be a one. So the original question was base two of log base two of one. That's all going to equal one. That's all you need to do there. And there's another way to do this question too, because um, two to the power of zero is one. So if you if you kind of looked at it that way too, you would know you could work it out like that. There's different ways to do these questions. Okay, last one, part C. For questions like this that have a plus sign in between them, sometimes I like to work them out separately uh, and then bring it all together. But you could do it in two parts, but I'm going to write all out underneath. So I'm going to start with the first base uh, is exponential. The first part is exponential. This piece is exponential. It's not in log form. It's, it's in exponential form. Let's take a look at that first. Because I'm introducing new letters all the time like this, um, I can't really write it alongside underneath. So this would be kind of an aside that I would be doing here. So I'm going to work on this kind of on the side. This is changing. I'm going to take a 2 log base 4 of 16. That's equal to whatever letter you like. Um, w. That's exponential form. I'm going to change it to log form. So log base 2 of W equals there's my arrow here, equals log base 2 of 16. Okay, so you can see what we've got here for our, our answer. Oops, that's a 4 there, sorry. Hopefully you guys notice that this is a 4, not a 2. Go back to that there, that's a 2. I put a 2, sorry, I should put a 4. Whoops, 4. So I have log base 2 of w equals log base, two, uh, log base 4 of 16. So this one isn't as straightforward as before. The other ones, these just matched. And we could get our answer really easily because they just matched. But this one, I can, if I erase the circle, I can hopefully figure this out on my own here. Right? What is log base 4 of 16? So convert that one to exponential. 4 to the power of what is 16? 4 to the power of what is 16? You get a 2 of that. So I was unable to use my little log pieces there to get them to be equal to each other. They weren't equal to each other. So I can't just say, OK, w is 2, because they had different bases. This was a 4 and this was a 2. So this one isn't as easy. But I I know that this part is going to equal a 2. And that's the same as this part right here log base 4 of 16 is equal to 2. So really that whole exponent is equal to 2. So trying it by writing it out as two uh, switching it to logs like like this example up here didn't work because my bases weren't the same. So really what I've got here is 2 to the power of 2 just because this piece right here is just 2. That's just, the exponent is just 2, so I was able to convert that there. Now log base 5 of the third root of 5, again, you can work it out. And we did examples like this on the first slide. You can work it out on the side. And some of you, I think, are maybe getting a little better at, at figuring this out without having to do a bunch of extra work. So let's just, for those of us that need the extra step here, let's write it out. Log base 5, and I'm just going to change this to 5 to the power of 1 third. That's equal to whatever letter you like there. How about a B? Converting that, my base is a 5 to the power of B equals 5 to the power of 1 third. So I can see that this whole section here is equal to 1 third. You follow that? I just did this piece separately right here, and I got it to be equal to one third. So I, I 
ignored the bases, that gave me b equals one third. And because I called this whole thing b up here, I, I, change, I let it all equal b, oops, one third. Once I figured out b, I could put it in the place there. So I have four plus a third, which is four and one third. These ones are getting a little more complicated because they're not working out as nicely as we would like them to be. We're having different types of bases and, and there's radicals in here and, and we try something and maybe it doesn't work and you have to try something else. But hopefully some of you are getting close to not having to convert all the time to exponential. You can, you're starting to look at these logs and say, well, I know what that's equal to. I don't need to do the work separately, but but if you're not there yet, it's fine. You'll get there eventually. Example two, we're going to graph. We're going to go back to grade 11 and graph f at x equals 2 to the power of x. And then we're going to use our graph to answer these a, b, c, and d. 2 to the power of x. 2 to the power of x. You guys should be able to give me coordinates for that really quickly. I'm going to list some up here. So. Coordinates are, for example, subbing in is 0. f at 0 is 2 to the power of 0. That means we have the coordinate 0, 1. What other coordinates are there? How about 1? Sub in a 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. What about a 2? 2 to the power of 2 is 4. A 3, 8. Now let's get some hard ones in here. What about the coordinate of negative 1? What's 2 to the power of negative 1? 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 half, 1 half. How about 2 to the power of negative 2? That's 1 over 2 squared. That's 1 fourth. Okay, so let's graph these. We've got pretty small numbers, so I can count by 1s on my scale. In, but I'm going to skip them, and I'm going to skip counting. I'm going to count. I'm going to write every second one just because it, it'll get too crowded for me to write in every single number there counting by ones. Okay, 2 to the power of x has a horizontal asymptote at uh, right along the x-axis when y equals 0. So let's put a line right across here. I'll kind of put it above it a little bit just so it doesn't blend in too much, but really imagine that's running right along the x-axis. That is y equals 0. That's my asymptote. Now I'm going to put those points on that we got across the top. There's the coordinates and remember that we are, um, this is an increasing function so it's always going up and I'm going to try and hit the dots there. Going in the other direction I'm going to run along the asymptote as, as much as I can and put an arrow there. So there's our graph f at x equals 2 to the power of x. Don't forget the asymptote. It's part of the function that you must graph. Now it says use your graph to estimate each of the following logarithms. 10 to the power of, uh, sorry, 10 equals 2 to the power of x. Now that's the same as log base 2 of 10. We are going to look at the graph and estimate 2 to the power of x is the graph. That's what I graph there. That's my graph. I want to know in my graph, my blue curve, I want to know when the graph is equal to 10. And that was that's a y value. So I go up my y-axis to the 10. And put the laser pointer on here. I go up to the 10, which would be there, and I go across, and I'm kind of going to estimate where I would hit the blue curve there. Now I know that I know that 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so it's got to be it, that's going to help me figure it out. 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so it's got to be more than 8, of course. Um, but we just um, estimate, and I would say that's it's just over 3, maybe you know 3.2 or something like that. So that's the answer I'm going to put down for. This is my estimation here. I think it's about, in this case, I would say x is about 3.2. Just a guess. Next one, log base 2. So 
log base 2 of 1 third. How do I get that for my graph? My graph is not log base 2. My graph is the inverse of that. So maybe now's a good time to convert. Let's how about a m. Okay, m to the power of 2 equals 1 third. Sorry, whoa, it's getting late. 2 to the power of m equals 1 third. And that's my graph. If I would have chosen an x instead of an m, it would be more obvious, but I just wanted to show you. You can put whatever letter you like. So we've got 2 to the power of m, or x, equals 1 third. So I go over to my graph, and I'm looking for where my blue graph has a height or a y value of 1 third. Well, that's pretty low, right? That's going to be pretty low. I know that when I subbed in a negative 2, I got a quarter. So that's a little bit of a hint. So you take a guess at what you think height of 1 third, go across, across till you hit the graph, and come up with an estimate for an x value there. Let's say x equals approximately, so again, 1 third. If 1 third is here, I'm putting a mark right on the graph. If that's 1 third is about here. I'm looking for a y value of 1 third. I go across. Oops. I, don't, I shouldn't be, this is a quarter right there. I should be higher than that. So it's got to be before that, somewhere around here. Maybe negative 1.8. It can't be negative, it can't be all the way over to negative 2 because negative 2 gives me a quarter and a quarter is smaller than a third. So we've got to be less than that. So maybe negative 1.8 is a guess. Next one, log base 2 of 60. So if I change that to a letter like A, that would give me 2 to the power of A equals 60. Well, I don't have a y value of 60 on my graph. This would be the y value. I didn't. I didn't write, my grid only goes up to 10. So I can't do this one. That's what I have, that's what I'm saying down here. To estimate without graphing, use your knowledge of bases and exponents, and then use your calculator to guess and check. So 2 to the power of something that's close to 60. For example, 2 to the power of 5. What's that? 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So I need to be more than that because I want this number to be a 60. What's 2 to the power of 6? That's 64. So it's probably pretty close to 6. It's probably pretty close to the number I want. So I'm going to guess here at x is about, let's say, 5 point, more than 5.5. Let's say 5.8. This is a guess. And you can use your calculator to guess and check. So now you could get out your calculator, put in 2 to the power of 5.8. How close are we to 64? Are we very close? And you can keep doing trial and error to get a little bit closer. So we could do better than that. But I'll show you that later. Right now we're just estimating. D is the last one. Again, I'm in log form. And maybe I would not like to be in log form. So I'm going to make this equal to R. Okay, 2 to the power of R equals negative 3. Hmm. To the power of r. So let's look at our graph over there. When is our graph going to have, here's negative 3 right here. That's negative 3. My graph will never be there. So there's no answer for this question. This one is undefined. Undefined. We cannot define it. Or you could put no answer, I guess, if you want to, but undefined is a little better. The last thing I want to show you is how to do this math that we just did in the above questions without this guess and check, without looking at a graph and kind of guessing where it would be or getting at our calculator and trying a bunch of numbers. We're going to learn a formula later that is really useful. Um, we're going to learn where the formula comes from, but for right now, I'm going to just go ahead and give you the formula. It's called the change of base formula and it's needed actually for your homework instead of doing trial and error all the time. And the change of base formula is this. When you have a base like we just did that is not 10, and our calculator won't, our, most of our calculators will only take a base of 10. Some of yours might be, might be able to change the base yourself in your calculator, but our calculators only have a base of 10. So 
when we have a base that's not a 10, how do we solve it without trial and error? And this is a little formula and you're going to learn it later, but it's very handy right now. And that's an invisible base of 10 because I didn't write it. Log A over log invisible base of 10, B. So whatever your base is, that goes on the bottom and your other number goes on the top. That's called the change of base formula. So that changes it from a base of B to a base of 10. So let's try it. Let's take this question right here. Log base 2 of 60, I want to sub it in here. I want it to look like this so that I can use my calculator. That means log, so it's going to be log over log. You just have to not mess up which number goes where. You only have two numbers. You have a 2 and a 60. Don't mess them up. The base goes on the bottom, 2, 60. So put that in your calculator, your base 10 calculator, and see what you get. Did you do it? You should be trying it to see if it works. And you're getting 5.906A and so on, right? So here's my guess, 5.8, that was pretty good. To do that without a calculator, 5.8, but the right answer is closer to 5.9. And you can use that change of base formula for this one as well. You can try it out and see how close we were with 1.8. So that's called the change of base formula and you can need it for your homework. We will learn why it works later, how, where that formula came from. But for now, when we're evaluating logs, which is today's lesson, you can use that formula when you have a base that is not 10. Well, that's kind of a complicated lesson today. I find those logs and exponential and switching back and forth and all those little, little where we have the bullets, all those little pieces, little kind of bits. Students tend to like to memorize them. I, I think it's better if you just work them out each time, just figure them out each time. Um, but certainly memorization is a technique that works for lots. So whatever works for you and you can practice it in your homework.